The message seems to be the lack of a message on behalf of Democrats. Harry Kurtz headline, foxnews.com. Democrats struggling for pocketbook message as roaring economy helps Trump. How are you going to counter that? Well, you know, if we had a song, we would break it because we have 21 candidates. But I think the message is going to be very clear and concise as this campaign move along. We want an economy that works for everyone. We want to make sure that they share prosperity, not just at the top, but in the middle and also at the bottom. So I think Democrats will have a strong message and something that will resonate with those Americans who are still struggling to make ends meet. I'm not afraid right now that we don't have a hit record. All right. Veteran Democratic pollster, Celinda Lake. Do you know her? Very well. She's okay. a great friend of All mine. Right. Well, she was quoted <laughs> as saying, we will tend to talk about things like paid leave and equal pay that don't add up to an economic message robust enough to win the presidency. End quote. What do you think of that? I think she's right. We, we cannot just talk in the abstract. People want to know how this will benefit them, how it will make their lives better, how it will put food on their table, how it will reduce the, the cost of prescription medication that they're on. So I get what Celinda is saying. Look, I was just at the gas pump on my way here to Fox News, and I'm astounded about the amount of money that we're paying for gas right, you know, as we get into the summer season. But at the end of the day, the American people want an economy that works for everyone. And if, as long as Democrats can talk about that we have a lane in which we can grow support and take on President Trump. Has, the, has President Trump been good for the U.S. economy? Look, I thought President Obama was because, look, he was able to help get the economy back on his feet. And now that we're standing up and the stock market is soaring, but remember, many Americans don't have any, any stocks. They don't have a, a pension fund that is based on their, you know, their average in the market. We want an economy that works for everyone, and I think that's what the Democrats' message will be. And by the way, I'm very excited to see that the president will be meeting with uh, Leader Pelosi and, and Leader Schumer and others because infrastructure, rebuilding yeah. our infrastructure, investing in, in our hometown America, that's what the Democrats you are know, working for. And on that point, you think about the bar stuff and the Mueller stuff and, you know, both sides sitting down today. Do you think there's the will and desire on behalf of everyone to get that done? Bill, I, I believe that if, if I had my one meeting with President uh, Trump, it would be to focus on what will make our economy stronger. How do we prepare our children for a 21st century uh, economy, a global marketplace where they have to compete not just with, with children and kids from other towns and cities, but other nations? And I think this is a very important time to discuss this. How do you think Joe Biden is doing so far as he's rolled out his the first days of his campaign. You know, I was worried in the beginning because of uh, all of the stuff that came at him. And, you know, when, you, when you're trying to, you know, get back into the race and get back into the game, although Joe Biden is someone who knows how to walk and chew gum and he, he's, a, he's a great fighter. But, you know, the interview yesterday, uh, I mean, the, the appearance yesterday in Pittsburgh, uh, the interview this morning, the new video, I think Joe, Joe Biden got his stride. By stuff that He's came be out, a, he, obviously you're referencing back to allegations of, of inappropriate yeah. contact with, with, with him and, and women. Retail so politics, what did you touch think him, of, whatever you want to call it. What did you think of his handling of, uh, of the Anita Hill question that he got there, saying that he believed her from the very beginning, but he said he took responsibility, said I was chairman, she did not get a fair hearing, she did not get treated well. You know, we we see so many men and, and others when these allegations come out, they're like, no, you know, I didn't do it. The woman is a lot. He took responsibility. He finally owned it. And if you own it, people respect that. And I hope he can now move on because there are a lot of issues. Joe, Joe Biden it respects women. It doesn't appear that everyone is willing to move on at this point. Sander was just pulling the quote here. Mm. Uh, here's the clip from ABC. Good morning, America. Yes, oh, thank you. Here. Number three, guys. I believed her from the very beginning, I, but I was chairman. She did not get a fair hearing. She did not get treated well. That's my responsibility. And I committed that I am determined to continue the fight to see to it that we basically change the culture in this country. Can he shake these questions or is it just going to continue yes. to nibble at him, Donna? 
you know, first of all, it takes a long time for wounds to heal. We all know that. These scars are real. I was a congressional staffer when my old boss, Eleanor Holmes, I shouldn't call her old, but my former boss, Eleanor Holmes Norton, marched across the tarmac. We wanted to make sure that Anita Hill had a, a fair and honest hearing. Compare that to Christine Blasey Ford and what happened to her uh, last year. So, yes, I think he will be able to talk about the issues. His vision Ford, for Ford's America. Ford's hearing was unfair? Oh, my God, it, that was a travesty, the way she was treated. From the moment she rose up and, and, and the, the way they treated her. But look, I do believe that this is a new era, a new time, and Joe Biden is at least understanding that you cannot just go back on your record and say, I'm, I'm a great leader, without explaining some of the th errors and mistakes you've made. We've all made mistakes. We all seek forgiveness, and I'm glad that Joe Biden has the grace to do so. Here's the Hill. Biden's launch riles up Trump while Trump's team sees flaws in Biden. It considers his broad name recognition ties to former President Obama and appeal to white working class voters as potential advantages for him in a general election matchup. Right now, 20 Democratic 2020 contenders. Who is best to go up against President Trump, Donna? All, all 20 of them. And by the way, we might get 21 because I believe Come on. Governor Steve you can Bull do better hey! than that. Come on, we're going to break records this year. It's going to be record number of candidates, record number of voters going out to vote, record amount of money raised, and record appearances by Donna Brazil on Fox News. Okay. Hello? Okay. You're going to have this to come up good. with a better answer this is next good. time. Donna, thanks for I coming I will. Back. I'm going to work on it, Bill. Sandra, <laughs> I'm going to work on it, okay? It's going to be a beautiful year. Get ready. Thank you, Donna. Donna, thank you. <laughs> thank you.